Thank you uh, very much indeed, Sasha, for that very kind introduction. Good, good morning, or actually, I think just good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd first of all like to thank the team at Smart Energy GB for inviting me to speak today. I'm de delighted to be at the Crystal, which is one of the world's most sustainable buildings. It exemplifies, I think, the potential for technology to change our lives. Indeed, technology has already changed our lives in ways we couldn't have imagined 10 years ago. Harnessing the power of these changes is a real challenge, but it's also an opportunity. This venue and this event really illuminate some of those opportunities, from smarter buildings and smart grids, which we've just been hearing about, to minimizing energy consumption, which is truly important, and taking advantage of renewable energy and the role these opportunities can play in tackling climate change. I was delighted to hear Jonathan Porritt. I've been a great disciple of his for some time, and I remember him coming to Wales and, and speaking when we met on a previous occasion, and he's done massive missionary work in this area, and also to listen to Robert Dender and the importance of, of smart grids, which is, is certainly central to what we're doing, and the, and the, and the question from Chi perhaps uh, underlining the importance of that. If I could perhaps just, just at the outset, outset say a little bit about the inter international position, which I hadn't intended to do, but to perhaps to try to pick up some of the, the gauntlet that was thrown down by uh, Jonathan. Um, and first of all, to say that I, I haven't met with a single fossil fuel uh, business since being in office. I'll probably be in trouble for that now. But uh, the, last, the last person I met, I met uh, in relation to business was actually Paul Polman uh, yesterday for, for breakfast, and he, along with Jeff Seavright, and of course in Unilever, they're doing fantastic things on deforestation, and it's very central to what uh, we as a department have focused on, what the Secretary of State is focused on, and what will be um, a leading part of the discussions in Paris, which start uh, at the end of this month, on the 30th of November. I think the, the next day is a, is a forest day, the, the 1st of December, and that's a very important part of keeping the uh, two degrees centigrade goal in sight, which of course is the focus. And um, I don't share some of the gloom and, gloom and doom that we, that we have on the climate change agenda. I mean, of course, we've got to be realistic. But if we look to see where we are now in relation to where we were at Copenhagen, we have made fantastic strides. We have had 156 countries have come forward with their uh, intended uh, nationally determined contributions, that, that's a fantastic amount and beyond what I think anybody really expected. And that, that is some, some of the really good news. There's still a challenge there. I mean, we're still ahead, unfortunately, of the two degrees centigrade in sight. We're about at 2.7, I think. So Paris isn't an end in itself. We'll need a, a proper review of that, I think, realistically, five, five years on to revisit all of that and to ramp things up. And we need a rules-based system but, but th this country and this Secretary of State, Amber Rudd, has been central to what's going on. I mean, she has truly been working her socks off on the finance package. She's been asked to do that by uh, President Hollande, and she's been trying to pull countries together on the financial package on adaptation and on uh, r resilience, and, and has, I think, been doing a, a, a really good job in that regard. We have, of course, as a country, committed £5.8 billion, 50% to mitigation, 50% adaptation. So I think that, again, is something uh, that we can be proud of. But let, let me come back to smart meters, if I might, and maybe there'll be, perhaps be a chance to enlarge on some of that, that later. As I say, the, the Secretary of State is pledged to acting on climate change. It, it's vital to preserving our economic prosperity, not least, and protecting our people and our country, and indeed, as I've just indicated, our globe. Uh, we also need to make great strides in improving energy efficiency. And in this uh, context, DEC's priorities are clear. We've, we've heard about affordability, which is important, as is security of supply. But decarbonisation is obviously central to everything that we do and decarbonising in a cost-effective way. So I'm here to talk about something that can make a contribution to all of these priorities and indeed is doing so. So not only will smart metering transform how the energy sector does business in the 21st century, it will transform consumers' relationship with energy use. And this is already beginning to happen. Let, let me say something about smart metering benefits, because they will bring a range of benefits to people's lives. Let me say what I see as the key benefits of smart metering for consumers. 
They come conveniently, I think, in terms of three C's. And the first C is for control. Because by telling people in near real time how much energy they're using and how much it's costing them, the in-house display empowers them to save energy, and that's important. Smart meters also mean an end to estimated bills. So consumers are empowered to manage energy costs like never before and avoid using uh, high, uh, sorry, and avoid unexpectedly high and inaccurate energy bills. More and better data from smart meters enables consumers to make more informed choices when choosing their energy supplier and getting the right tariff. And of course, we have now 31 energy suppliers, whereas five years ago we only had six. So there is a much more competitive and diverse uh, system out there of energy supply. The second C is for convenience. No longer will householders or suppliers need to read their meters. That'll be a thing of the past. It will save money and it'll save hassle. For customers on prepayment meters, topping up will be made easier, more like topping up on a mobile phone. And this, of course, is fantastic news and helps us to tackle the scourge of fuel poverty. Smart meters will also facilitate faster, more convenient switching of suppliers, as I've indicated. And the third C, and crucially important, is catalyst. Smart meters will provide a catalyst for a more efficient, smarter energy system, as we've been hearing. They'll provide more and better data on which to make investment decisions for Britain's energy infrastructure. Let's say something about the rollout so far. More than a million households are benefiting from smart meters today. In fact, we've rolled out over 1.7 million meters in all. There's an overwhelmingly positive consumer experience of the early rollout, with Smart Energy GB finding this year that 84% of those with smart meters installed would recommend them to others. Now, that sort of approval rating for a government project is, is off the scale, really. It's the sort of approval rating the Queen Mother used to, used to get, and so... <laughs> We don't want to lose sight of how well we're doing, but we have to be realistic that it is, it is a fantastic approval rating. Now, I've met uh, now with all of the major energy suppliers. I saw the last of them yesterday to express the government's commitment to this program. That's the big six, and I've been seeing some, some of the others uh, as well, some of those that are coming up on the rails. And I've heard many encouraging stories that this is helping them to engage with their customers in ways that were not previously possible. We're seeing a positive change in the consumer offer too. A number of suppliers are now offering smart pay-as-you-go, which I'm very pleased about, and it will save many customers money and deliver a much better consumer experience. This, then, is a solid foundation on which we can build, and we're continuing to make significant progress towards the main stage of the program. The data and communications company, DCC, has begun its first crucial system integration testing stage on time. All large suppliers are readying their workforces and systems for the main rollout. Many are already installing smart meters. Latest published figures show 1.3 million smart meters have been installed in domestic properties and over 620,000 smart and advanced meters in non-domestic sites. Network operators are gearing themselves up to support a high volume of installations. At the same time, we know that reaching every household in Britain by the end of 2020 is an ambitious and challenging aim. Any large-scale national infrastructure program brings with it a set, of a set of challenges, and smart metering is no different. The rollout will not happen overnight, so we need to ensure continuity and momentum over an extended period. The program depends on successful delivery by multiple players, including energy suppliers, large and small, network operators and consumer groups. And in turn, these organizations will have many partners, including those delivering the smart meters and in-house displays, meter financing companies, IT services, marketing and communications partners, and many more. If I could also say we're working with the uh, devolved administrations on smart metering as well. So like a good orchestra, it's important that we all play the same tune and our team in deck uh, we play the conductor role with me perhaps as Simon Rattle.
Driving the public's awareness and understanding and ultimately inspiring them to demand and use smart meters is also key. And I pay, again, tribute to what Smart Energy GB are doing on this. I do not believe in any way that any of these challenges is insurmountable. When a program has the potential to deliver valuable benefits, it's worth meeting those challenges head on. So we're updating the nation's energy infrastructure so that it's fit for the challenges of the 21st century and working at pace to deliver by the end of 2020. This is right for industry, it's right for the economy, and it's right for individuals, families, and businesses. The benefits of smart metering must be delivered in the real world. We know that smart meters can and will transform energy, so the watchword of the coming years, which I've been stressing with the suppliers, is delivery, as this is the only way that benefits will be delivered for British energy, for consumers, for businesses, and ultimately help with our goal of decarbonisation. Beyond the next few years, I'm looking to a future where not only are there great benefits for households, businesses, but where smart meters also unlock a smarter way of living, which we've been hearing about from Robert, a smarter energy grid and a smarter Britain, a future where we can integrate intermittent energy sources efficiently and handle the increased demands of the electrification of heat and transport, where energy supplies incentivize demand shifting among consumers, reducing the need for costly investments in generation and distribution assets, and saving consumers money. Where consumer devices linked to the meter provide a range of services, such as reassurance about the well-being of elderly relatives, and smart appliances communicate with smart meters and use energy when it is cheapest. In this future, the public will be better informed and actively engaged about their energy consumption than ever before, and it will support our long-term decarbonisation goals too. In order to get there, and again we've touched on this, we need the development of new products and services, but we also need, importantly, behavioural change. In my mind, it's, it's a little bit like behavioural change we've seen in, in other areas, and recycling, where people do this now uh, as a matter of course, perhaps a change of social attitudes as well, which we've seen, for example, in relation to drink driving. I think this is, in many ways, a parallel. The benefits that smart metering will bring will make a challenging journey worthwhile. Smart Energy GB are key to this journey and will need to reach out to a diverse British public, including the most vulnerable in society and the micro-businesses that make a vital contribution to our economy. They're stopping, stepping up to the plate alongside good old Gaz and Leckie, who I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more of in the months and years ahead. Energy suppliers are, of course, of course, have a crucial role in engaging consumers. They're at the front line of the program and must pr provide a good experience to their customers. But this program is about so much more than, than installing new meters and raising national awareness. If the benefits I outlined earlier are to materialize, then, smart, th then suppliers and Smart Energy GB must meet the challenge of ensuring consumers are empowered with the right information to take control of their on energy use. This is perhaps Smart Energy GB's biggest challenge, but it's also the biggest opportunity in many of our lives to make meaningful change to public behavior, to enable consumers to reduce energy consumption and also reduce our collective carbon footprint. In conclusion, we know that this is an ambitious program and with ambition comes challenge. 2016 will certainly be a crucial year for the program. We do not achieve anything in any work, walk of life without hard work, dealing with challenges when they arise, and keeping an eye on the ultimate prize. I do not underestimate the challenge that lies ahead, but I'm optimistic and excited about both the journey and the destination. The government is committed to delivering smart metering by the end of 2020. It can be done if we all, government, suppliers, network operators, Smart Energy GB, and its national and grassroots partners work together. If we achieve that, then we will have the key to unlocking the future of a smarter Britain. That's what consumers will quite rightly demand, and that's what we must deliver. Thank you very much indeed.